we've heard confidence, swagger, fearlessness. What do you think about Heels so far? Well, yeah, I just like, uh, you know, I'm not going to say body language tonight. I'm just going to tell you that he's got a, you can tell there's a lot of mo motion boiling around there, but he knows how to funnel into his pitching. And uh, some guys, as they go up, they perform to the level. You know, it's like golfers. When they play with bad golfers, they don't play well. But when they play with good golfers, this looks like a kid that raises his game to uh, the level in which it needs to be at. And uh, you can tell some of the emotion off the moment. You can tell in a, the spontaneity of a moment what's really boiling inside. And, uh, you know, that's why I love this type of game. This time of the year is because everybody, it's about team. What can I do to help our team right now? Buck, Luke Voigt had a really solid day. We talked about his defense in game one. He obviously had the home run in game two. Rizzo is coming back soon, and Luke Voigt's playing time is going to be impacted. What kind of message would you give to a guy like Voigt in terms of just going forward and kind of forcing Aaron Boone's hand to get him in the lineup? Well, you know, Jack, I don't think you bite off something until you have to. Who knows, the next day or two, uh, something else might happen. Yeah, Stanton has shown the ability to play the outfield. Judge will be out there. Judge could play center field. You could have Gallo, Judge, and Stanton and have the biggest physical outfield maybe ever in the game. And then Voight would fit again. I mean, I don't think you say something unless you're sure it's going to happen because things change daily. Be careful about telling somebody something you're not sure is going to happen. You know, Buck, I'm glad you said kind of it's all about the team right now because this time of year right now for the Yankees, everything is clicking. Kind of all season it's been the starting pitching. The offense lately we've seen come to life, and now the relievers are back at it again. We talked about how good relief was in game one, and tonight Peralta gets four big outs, and then Chad Green closes it out. Well, I think a lot of the, what uh, the front office and Brian Cashman felt like when they had a Peralta, when they had a Jolie Rodriguez, you know, in that deal with Gallo and uh, some of the people they added along the way. But understand, the Yankees have a luxury that at some time during the season, Chapman, Britton, Loisaga, and Green are all capable of closing and pitching at the end of the game. Unfortunately, they're not all four clicking at the same time. That That's not going to happen. It's just like not having nine hitters you know, clicking at the same time. This just doesn't happen. But uh, right now, there's a good feel, you know, whoever gets the ball is, is going you know, to take it and do the job. And I'm talking about everybody in their bullpen. Buck, what do you think the Red Sox are feeling in their clubhouse right now? They've seen the Yankees chop it away at a nine-game deficit in about a three-week span. And the team they had handled earlier in the year is handling them now. What do you think the Red Sox psyche is? Well, they're, you know, Jack, if you asked them before the season started, would you take right now where they are? They would probably be taking it, but they're not in that mode now. And Alex has not gotten where he gets uh, Alex Core without with panicking. He's not going to. And uh, it's tough times right now, but there's 42 games left. We saw how quickly the fortunes for the Yankees can change. And the same thing with the Red Sox. I mean, a week later, you're sitting there, and it's a whole different scenario. And now Toronto's competitive, Tampa's competitive, obviously. So you're going to have some people beating on each other. But the Yankees only have to do one thing and worry about themselves. And what happens with these other clubs happens. Just keep taking care of business.